So it seems the weather machine is fixed. It was broken last night. According to uh, local weather, it was supposed to storm last night. All kinds of rain. It's supposed to be a little, little crazy, a little hellacious, if you will. And nothing ever happened. And it was supposed to go from maybe 7 o'clock last night all the way through this morning. And it literally just started about 30 minutes ago. So I guess somebody went to their little the harp the the weather machine and like banged it with a, a hammer or a wrench or something and got it working because now it's pouring just so you know had to run through the rain to get to the jeep um i want to talk to you guys about something that's extremely important because it could affect literally could affect every single homeowner out there i don't think it's going to affect people in apartments i'm safe from this um but a lot of y'all i know own your own homes or rent homes but you're on some sort of land with a house right and so this is extremely important to talk about. I'm sorry, I also have very dry lips right now. Um, extremely important to talk about because there's a huge push for squatters' rights right now, which is the best way to put that. So I came across this story, and hopefully it's not too loud. I know the rain is a little crappy, but I couldn't record in the apartment because it's, it's spring break, and my kid is on the computer with her friends, and they're playing games, and there's a lot of giggling, and it's loud and whatever. So this was the quieter option, honestly. So, um, what was I saying? Right now, there is a story <clears throat> that I came across in Georgia about a 77-year-old man who was arrested for not leaving his own home after a squatter took it over. Do you understand how incredibly effed up that is and how incredibly stupid it is that we are in a time where squatters and uh, illegal immigrants, technically, because we're going to get to that part too, how it goes hand in hand, how they have more rights than homeowners and American citizens, it's a little stupid. So this says, uh, this is out of DeKalb County in Atlanta. 77-year-old man arrested and couple forced to move after the DeKalb home is stolen in a fraud case. Technically, a fraud case isn't considered a squatter, although it is along the same lines. So we've got two different things here that are kind of working hand in hand to make life very difficult for homeowners in general. This one being a fraud case, right? So let me explain how this happened. This is a Stone Mountain couple. They said they were forced out of their home after someone stole it from them in a case of fraud. Police even arrested one of the homeowners after the 77-year-old man refused to leave. As, as well he should have. I would not have left either. Go ahead and arrest me. I dare you. I will sue the pants off of DeKalb County. You know what I mean? So according to this, um, Charmaine Allman is uh, the wife of the man who was arrested. Said they lived in their home for more than 20 years. On Thursday, their belongings were all in the yard. They came home from something they were doing on Thursday and all of their stuff from inside their home was in their yard, all right? The couple was told by DeKalb County Sheriff's deputies that they had to leave the home on Tuesday because their home had been sold without their knowledge. They made us feel like we were squatters. Uh, just tossed my stuff out like it was trash. They said um, the man who bought their home used a fraudulent document to, co to take over her property. To make matters worse, her husband was arrested for refusing to leave. I don't know how this is possible. How does this happen? Period. It's very upsetting to see my husband in handcuffs at 77 years old and placed in the car because he didn't want to leave his home. We have nowhere to go, no family, which is also a big issue for a lot of people who do not have children, who do not have anybody that can help take care of them as they get older. If you are pushed out of your home, if you are evicted, if squatters take over, you are almost, you know, it's, it, you're, you're on your own at that point. And at that age, most people do not have a ton of money to fight a legal system or fight whatever's going on. So this makes it even more, in my opinion, horrific, which is the word I'm going to use for this, because at their age, this is not something anybody should be dealing with. I do apologize for how loud the rain has gotten. I was not expecting it to be this um, aggressive. So I'm not trying to yell at you guys, but I want to make sure y'all hear me. And if this is just absolutely awful and y'all can't deal with it, I fully understand. No harm, no foul. Uh, read the, mute it and read the transcript or closed captions or something. So again, I apologize for the rain. The weather machine is really doing its thing today. So according to this, um, the guy who, who fraudulently purchased the house ran inside when he spotted Channel 2 Action News cameras. He would not answer any questions or come out of the house to talk to anybody because he knows what he did was illegal and wrong, right? Now, real estate attorney Richard Allenbeck said this type of fraud is on the rise. On the rise. This is not the first time they've seen it. It will not be the last time. It's, this, is, this is according to the attorney. It's too easy to forge a deed and record it. 
It's a big problem nowadays because of the fact that e-filing and the e-recording of deeds is so easy. It's very easy to record forged deeds. Again, we talk about how technology is, is going to be what, in my opinion, literally is the end of humanity. Technology, it's going to go so far that we lose absolutely everything because everything based on technology has an easier way of being effed up, if you will. Anybody can hack into it and change it. Anybody can fake something, you know, when it's the internet. Plus also all these things, once it's out there, it's out there for the rest of your life, right? But so the forging of the deed made me think about the brother of the man who killed uh, uh, Lake and Riley, the, the, not UGA student, she was on the UGA campus, the, the nursing student who was killed by the illegal immigrant, Lake and Riley was killed by the illegal immigrant, I will not say his name, and his brother, they found, had a fake green card. So imagine, y'all, just imagine, you can get a fake green card. If you, if you have the money and the ability to go buy yourself a fake green card, who's to say you aren't going to have the money and ability to go buy yourself a forged deed and take over somebody's home? I'm just putting that out there because we're going to get to the rest of that in just a second. But uh, according to this, the attorney said oftentimes notaries are not checking identification on these documents to verify the accurate homeowner before the documents get filed. As somebody who used to be a notary republic in previous you know, life, you have got to check every single thing. As somebody who had to go to notaries, I would see the times where they would just be like, okay, whatever, and just do it because it's an easy thing. It's like $35 to go get notarized and become a notary. And you have a stamp and people come to you and you notarize things. Some people do it to help people do fraudulent things like this. There are plenty of people out there who are shady as all get out and will spend $35 to help other people be shady for extra money, you know, under the table. Who's to say this? That's not what happened here. There's no, this is the problem. There's no people's court for challenging a wrongful foreclosure or forged deed. That's the fundamental problem. The man who was arrested, the 77 year old man is still in jail, still in jail. It's his home and he's still in jail. Even if a homeowner can prove they've been the victim of this type of fraud, a judge can still order them to move out and pay. Explain to me why that is where we are as a society where if you can prove you can literally say here is everything actual factual physical proof that this is mine and the judge can say yeah well you still have to leave because they they proved it i know it's not real but they proved it you know more or whatever the crap they could possibly say to make this 77 year old man and his wife move out and be in jail all these things is absolutely ridiculous to me and i think that we have way more issues we talk about you know the issues in our government from the top you know the biden administration but we have to think about the issues in our government from the, the ground level from the people who run our cities, our municipalities, our towns, our villages, whatever it is you live in right now, you have to think about those people as well because they are the ones, it's like a stepping stone. They start down here and they make some shady decisions. They get bumped up making shady decisions and up and up and up. And the next thing you know, you have Sleepy Joe at the helm of everything. So those are things we have got to pay attention to. Your votes matter more so, in my opinion, in your local smaller uh, areas than they do in the grand scheme of thing. We all know that they're going to decide who's going to be whatever. And do we really have a say at the end of the day? We like to think so, but I don't fully believe that we do. But when on the smaller scale, let your voice be heard. That's all I got to say. Let your voice be heard. So the reason we're bringing this up today is because literally, literally, some dumbass TikToker came out and said he tells illegal immigrants how to invade American homes and invoke squatters rights. And this is the look, I'm going to show you his face. He looks I mean, he looks stupid as hell. But I mean, look at that face. He didn't want to be seen, I guess, but he looked real stupid. So he made a TikTok because anybody can have a TikTok account, right? Migrant TikToker. Oh, here he is. Well, there he is. Look, look how stupid he looks like sir, your face looks like a butthole. So he came out with this video. Um, let me see if I can get back to where I was. Okay. Migrant TikToker with 500,000 strong online following is offering his comrades tips on how to invade unoccupied homes and invoke squatters rights in the United States. But also please keep in mind, they will invade occupied homes as well. There's a house down the street from LeBron James, LeBron James, who squatters took over. I mean, that's ballsy to go take over a multi-million dollar home and pretend like it, you belong there. Especially if you don't speak a lick of English. That, that would make it even better. Anyway, um, let's see. 
uh, Venezuelan national, hmm, uh, Lionel Moreno. Isn't Venezuela the one where last year Biden gave 600,000 Venezuelans like permanent residents? I may be wrong here. Not, not on purpose though. Per no, not permanent residents. Um, working visas, work visas, 600,000 Venezuelans got work visas last year so that they could stay in this country and become part of the American dream. And I wonder if this dipshit is one of those who got a work permit. Anyway, uh, Lionel Moreno, who appears to live in a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, y'all, y'all in Ohio, come on, said in a recent video that under U.S. law, if a house is not inhabited, we can seize it. He appeared to be referring to adverse possession laws, commonly known as squatters' rights, which allow unlawful property occupants rights over the property they occupy without the owner's consent in certain circumstances. Let's just put a quick little pin in this real fast or pause it or whatever you want to call it and just go ahead and put it out there how incredibly stupid it is that we have squatters' rights. I think it's incredibly stupid. And I say that for every single person. I say it for if I happen to become homeless and I decide to go take over, over somebody's home, I do not have that right. As a homeless person, even though I'm trying to do the best for my family, whatever else, I do not have that right. The person who owns that home, who put in the time and the effort to raise the money, to buy the home and owns the home, they have the rights, not me. I think it's crazy that we allow stuff like this and call it rights. It's, it's so incredibly weird to me. Now, Moreno claimed in the viral TikTok clip, uh, which has drawn more than 3.9 million views, that he has African friends who have already taken about seven homes. So he's trying to pit everybody against everybody that's not white. That's what it sounds like there. And he's probably going to do a good job of that in some areas. Now, the firebrand influencer who lives with his partner and their baby daughter. Partner. So you have a gay Venezuelan because they don't say partner if it's the opposite sex. Generally speaking, I'm going to throw I'm going to throw this out there like this. 99% of the time, they're not going to call it your partner if it's the same sex. So you have a gay Venezuelan immigrant uh, with a child telling other illegal immigrants how to steal people's homes. This is just the most left thing I've ever heard in my life. If only he was drinking a Bud Light and tucking his, you know what. Um, many, TikToker, uh, many TikTok commenters were outraged by Moreno's message encouraging squatting, which has emerged as a major problem in recent years in the U.S. and especially in Democrat-led cities, including New York City, Atlanta, and Los Angeles. This guy needs to be charged with whatever crime. I don't even know what that means, but whatever crime. Inciting stupidity, inciting theft, technically, inciting an invasion. Because technically, that's what he's saying to do, that they should invade. He's inciting an invasion, if you want to go with it. Um, let's see. Pretty sure this is illegal, and I feel like he's encouraging others to engage in illegal activities. This is what somebody wrote. A third person that commented on this tagged the FBI, calling on the federal agency to please investigate that Venezuelan. Laws regarding squatters is, exist in all 50 states, offering, offering trespassers a wide range of protections if they establish legal occupancy of a home, making it difficult for property owners to evict them. Y'all, do you understand the stupidity of this? How do you establish legal occupancy of a home when it's not your home? You're not paying for it. How in the absolute H-E double hockey sticks is that a thing? It does not make sense to me. I will never understand our stupid ass backward laws that we have here in the United States. Now, I'm sure there's going to be some people who will say that squatters should have rights. Cool. You do you, boo. When they come take over your house, will you still feel the same way? I would not. I would be like, listen, is this a uh, right to stand your ground state? Does that count as standing your ground? If somebody's in your home and refuses to leave, they have they have broken into your home, they have invaded, they are, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's a very thin line right there where you could defend your property, but do you get in trouble for defending your property since these people have squatters rights? Like where, who's in the wrong here? It's just so incredibly stupid, so incredibly stupid. Look at all these people with their backpacks on, just chilling at the barbed wire, waiting to cross just whatever. And that's like when I went to Canada. So my husband and I went to New York, uh, not New York. Well, technically we went to Niagara Falls. Probably it's probably been 10 years. We took a road trip up the East coast. He and I, for one of our anniversaries, we drove from Atlanta all the way. We went through Philly. We went through, uh, Virginia. We went through West Virginia. We went through all the States, whatever. But we stopped in, um, 
New York, we went to the, uh, I just said it, y'all. I just said it. What, what's going on here? My brain has stopped braining. Niagara Falls, hello. I went to Niagara Falls, and you can see right there, right there is the border of Canada. And I can see the Hard Rock Cafe, Hard Rock Hotel, Hard Rock Cafe sign, all these bright lights right through the border crossing into Canada. I didn't have a um, pa uh, passport at the time. Do you think that I went up there and just tried to bum rush my way in? No. Why? Because I'm not a fucking idiot. Like, I don't, it, whatever. They probably would have shot me. Canadian people probably would have been like, uh, what's that all about? Shot me and then apologized for shooting me for, you know, trying to break into their country. Us here, though, we're not allowed to do anything to stop anybody from invading our country, but it's, it's fine. Now, it says here that the migrant influencer has previously shared videos bragging about earning money by begging on the streets while collecting government handouts. He also made headlines last month by urging his compatriots to throw their support behind 15-year-old Jesus Alejandro Rivas Figueroa, who was charged as an adult with attempted murder for allegedly shooting a tourist in Times Square and firing on cops. I invite you to look for his mother and all of us join to pay the bail so that this young Venezuelan feels that you're not alone in difficult times, but remembers that there is a God up there who sees. Today it could be him, tomorrow it could be you. He did something wrong. It's okay. <laughs> Y'all. Now listen, listen. I, if I in my previous um, corporate America life, I dealt with all kinds of people. A ton of people I met and dealt with were illegal immigrants because of where I worked and, and, and whatever else. I dealt with a lot of illegal immigrants. 99.9% .9 of them were hardworking men and women, very nice, whatever else. But even once in a while, I would come across somebody who was so effing entitled and it was like, how, like, how do you have that mind frame being here the way you are I don't understand. I don't understand entitlement no matter what. I'm, I'm not going to say that as a white woman, I'm entitled to anything. As an American citizen, I have the right to expect um, that I would have more recourse than an illegal immigrant. That's not entitlement. That's, you know, having brain cells. That, that's how that one works. This right here, this guy, I hope he remembers there is a God up there who sees sir. I don't think you know how God works. He's going to see, but I'm pretty sure murder and stuff like that is still something God's not for. Just putting it out there like that. You know what I'm saying? So the reason this is important is because he's telling people to go to places and, and, you know, squat, basically take over your home, take over something that belongs to you and you will have no recourse for it because right now our government is all about everybody, but the actual American citizen. When you stop and think about how many illegal immigrants have come across the borders, the borders, not just southern, there's northern borders. We've got east and west borders, too. Don't forget about it. Well, technically, those aren't borders. The ocean doesn't really count, but y'all know what I'm saying. We're, we're, there's a lot of places people can come in from. Here is a map. This was updated today, just so you know, a map of all the sanctuary counties, cities, and states. And I would like to show you what we have here. Now... Canada is in this picture, but they're not part of the map, I guess. So anyway, here is the map of, again, the yellow, where'd the thing go? Where'd the little bar thing go? Oh, it's up there. The yellow are counties, the red are cities, the green are states. These are all sanctuary areas where this Venezuelan man is telling these people, hey, if you happen to be in these cities, go find yourself a house and take it. God will let you. It'll be fine. You've done nothing wrong. Basically what he is saying. And our law is also saying, hey, it's fine. As long as you can make it look legal, you're good. So keep in mind, if you happen to live in any of these places, you could be effed real hard right now if you happen to own a home and you leave it at any point in time. What this says to me is you can never leave your house. The second you step out your door and close it, if there's anybody sitting around the corner going, mm -hmm, I like that one, I'm gonna take that one, and they jump in, you can't do anything about it. Nothing. I remember when Illinois changed some of their stuff and... One of the police chiefs came out and talked about how incredibly stupid it was what they were doing because they, as police, have no recourse to help you as a homeowner if somebody decides they want to go into your house. You can't defend yourself in Illinois. They can't kick anybody out of your house. You're up a creek without a paddle. Technically, it's up shit creek without a paddle. Um, and that's going to happen more and more and more, at least until November. 
depending on how things go. Who knows? I'm just saying, at least until November, your house is not safe, okay? So sanctuary cities, there's a whole lot. I will put this in the pinned comment so you guys can see all the states and cities where they are um, sanctuary areas, just so you have an idea of if you are safe or not as a homeowner in these locations. Because don't forget, there is the uptick of, my nails are awful, y'all. I have an appointment on Monday, I swear to get these things off. It's, it's I know. Um, there is an uptick of people forging, forging fake deeds so they can just, you know, take your house out from underneath you and you as the homeowner have no recourse because the courts don't give a shit. And then you also have illegal immigrants who are being rallied and being told and being shouted from TikTok rooftops that they need to go take your homes because um, it's the, it, that way you're not on the streets because you're less of a burden to them if you're in a home than you are on the streets. That's how he phrased it in his video. He made it sound like illegal immigrants were doing us all as a country a favor by stealing homes because at least we didn't have to see them on the streets. Pretty sure it's a shitty situation either way. Could just be me. Again, I will put this lovely, lovely map here in the pinned comment so you guys can see it and check out if your city is part of the sanctuary. I'm pretty sure if you live there, you know, but some people may not be aware of how close these sanctuary cities are to where they live. So I will put that in there. And um, that's that. But I just want you guys to keep an eye on this. What is this? Hold on. Did I have another thing? No, that's it. Uh, I just want you guys to be aware of exactly what is going on. I want you to make sure you understand, especially in your city, your county, your state, what the laws are for yourself and for squatters. You need to know exactly what recourse you have or do not have, and then not quite sure what you'll do with it. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what you could possibly do. Like, wh what can you do? That's a really good question. I don't have a solution for you. I brought you the problem. I have my reaction. I don't have a full on solution. And the solution I would give you, I can't say on here because then I would be the one inciting violence and they would, you know, yank my channel off. But I'm just going to say two way, hey, hey. Um, just make sure that you are aware of what is allowed and not allowed in your area. Okay. I think the, I was going to say the rain's slowing down. It's really not. It's really not. It's still just going crazy. It's fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Wasn't going to do anything outside today anyway. Had a lot of plans. They have all now gone to the wayside, so it's fine. Listen, Squirrel Tribe, I love y'all. Thank you for letting me have this conversation despite the loud rain. Hopefully it was not absolutely awful. I apologize if it is. Again, transcript or closed caption will be your best friends. And I want your thoughts and comments. As always, this is a community. Let's talk it out in the, in the comment section. So I love you guys, and I'll see you a little bit later. Um, yeah, that's about it. Love you guys. Bye.